Hi everyone, my name is Mihaela, or Miki Vorvoranu. I lead UX research and responsible AI education in Ether, Microsoft's research and advisory body on AI ethics and effects in engineering and research. And in a previous life, I was a professor of UX design and research. During the past few months, I've had the privilege of leading a cross-company team of researchers and product builders focused on fostering appropriate reliance on AI, specifically generative AI and our Copilot product. In this uh, working group, we think of fostering appropriate reliance on AI as striking a balance between people not over-relying too much on AI and accepting its outputs when they are incorrect or incomplete, and not underlying and not using or trusting AI outputs even when they could be useful. And so across all of us, we have started looking into how we can uh, foster research that leads to improvement in our own products. My team started looking into the problem of over-reliance on AI quite a while back. About two years ago, we released this first review of research literature about over-reliance on AI. In that paper, we isolated antecedents, mechanisms, and consequences of over-reliance on AI, and a series of mitigations that showed promise in the research literature. However, as we know, many such mitigations can backfire, actually increasing over-reliance rather than mitigating it. More recently, we released a second synthesis of research literature this one focused specifically on generative AI. We find that generative AI makes this tricky problem of over-reliance even more difficult for several reasons, one of them being um, that it is so much more difficult to spot incorrect or incomplete AI outputs, especially when they are formulated so fluently and with such impressive grammar. In this paper, we also looked at some over-reliance mitigations. Some of them have been mentioned in the literature before, such as cognitive forcing functions, um, and others quite new that involved using generative AI to critique existing answers or to stimulate critical thinking in um, generative AI users. As Eric Horvitz and Abby Sullen point out in the recent opinion piece, using generative AI places a high cognitive burden on regular people during everyday life. Such levels of attention and vigilance were only previously expected of highly trained professionals, such as airline pilots. And so in our group, we wonder, how might we make use of generative AI products a little bit easier so people can maximize the benefits minimize the risks while not spending as much mental energy as an airplane pilot would. In our internal research, and here I want to acknowledge my wonderful team members who have done um, all of this research, we have identified three possible directions. Each one of these is a problem slash an opportunity. The first one is that most people even advanced users of generative AI don't have useful mental models of how these technologies work. They mostly think of them as traditional web search, and that doesn't always come in handy. This points to the opportunity of helping people form useful mental models through AI literacy. We can create AI literacy not only through formal or informal education, but also through responsible communication in journalism and in marketing, and also during interaction with a product. We could do a better job of teaching people about generative AI while they interact with generative AI products. And here, the guidelines um, for human AI interaction from the Hacks Toolkit particularly guidelines 1, 2, and 11, which um, really emphasize how important it is to make clear to users the system's uh, not only capabilities, but also limitations, and provide some explanations of how it works so that they can form mental models. This is where these guidelines can really, really come into play.
Also invite you to keep a, an eye out on the Hacks Toolkit because we have been adding new examples um, and content related to uh, appropriate reliance specifically. And so this is one idea of how we could uh, intervene at the user interaction layer to actually foster uh, AI literacy and um, more useful mental models. The second direction um, and the second research findings is that overall, people are not inclined to verify AI outputs. Um, also, if you think about one of the most popular strategies that's used in most products to date is what I like to call the warning sticker strategy, where we might show something like AI-generated content might be incorrect. And this is partially useful. Um, people seem to have learned that. However, this type of notice doesn't mention that AI-generated content might also be incomplete. And so people might miss out altogether on the fact that important or useful information is not in the answer in the first place. And so that also raises the opportunity of how might we get people's attention, sort of arouse that attention and vigilance just a little bit so they know when it is time to check answers versus not um, in more important or high-risk situations. In the research that we highlight on the working team's uh, webpage, we show some papers that talk about communicating uncertainty uh, verbally via, via text output or via highlights that might help users spot when it might be time to increase their alertness level and verify outputs more carefully. Finally, the third direction um, is that the user experience of verifying generative AI outputs is rather difficult for many people. The primary UI paradigm that we use for this is to cite sources like we do in a research or a school paper. Now, this format in itself suggests a level of rigor and trustworthiness that AI-generated outputs might not be equal uh, with, with research papers. And so because of this signal, people might not be inclined to verify because what's really more trustworthy than a research or a school paper? And so this raises the opportunity of how might we make the relationship between AI-generated outputs and the information that they work with, their grounding data, more transparent, right? How might we make it easier to verify, to spot discrepancies, to spot incompleteness, but also looking even further into how we might use LLMs to propose critiques of their own responses, or as we see in some research that we highlight on the, the web page, to actually not just give people a response, but stimulate people to engage in critical thinking, which could be a very different paradigm of interacting with, with generative AI and large language models in particular. And throughout all this, what I would really like to highlight, and I do this with my co-authors in this piece that appeared um, as a opening article in ACM Interactions not very long ago, is really that this is a moment for UX disciplines to shine. As you can see, a lot of these mitigations, a lot of these techniques for fostering appropriate reliance are UX interventions, right? And this is where I think it is our responsibility as, uh, as people working in UX disciplines, as people researching UX and human computer interaction, to really, really step up to the front and uh, see how it is our moment to shine and to address this problem. So with that being said, I hope you stay in touch. I hope you follow our research, which we publish on the team's uh, webpage, and I hope you help us follow your research so maybe together we can work towards making progress on this very tricky but important problem. And with that, I want to thank you so much for following this presentation. I look forward to working with you.